Right, we've reached Act 2, Scene 3 of Othello. Uh, my name is Cathy Williams de Vries, yeah. and uh, I've been bringing you a reading and analysis of Othello in previous videos. So we're up to um, sort of stage one of Iago's plan at getting back at Othello. And in this scene, he um, gets Cassio drunk because he's recognised that he's a bit of a lightweight in the drinking department. Um, Cassio says, I have very poor and unhappy brains for drinking. So, um, and then he gets Rodrigo to pick a fight with Cassio. And Cassio continues on the fight with a few other people and thus disgraces himself and Othello uh, strips him of his lieutenantship and gives it to Iago. And uh, sort of stage two is uh, getting um, Iago getting Cassio to um, ask Desdemona to intervene for him in um, getting his in uh, in intervene with uh, use her influence with Othello in order to get his position back. And this, of course, plays into Iago's hands because in the next act he then um, he then poisons Othello's mind by saying, you know, well, because she's um, you know trying to uh, intervene with a, with Othello um, on Cassio's behalf that they therefore having an affair. Um, but that's that's the next act. That's the next act. Let's. Um, Let's get into uh, this scene. So Othello is talking to Cassio saying, Good Michael, look you to the guard tonight. Let's teach ourselves that honourable stop not to outsport discretion. So that's already um, a little bit of dramatic irony. Um, honourable stop meaning self-restraint um, and not to outsport past the limits of discretion. And Cassio says, Iago hath direction what to do, but notwithstanding, with my personal eye, will look to it. Iago is most honest. Again, here we've got dramatic irony. Michael, good night. Tomorrow, with your earliest, let me have speech with you. To Desdemona, he says, come, my dear love. The purchase made, the fruits are to ensue, the profits yet to come twixt me and you. So they obviously still haven't consummated the marriage. And they're just about to enjoy that. So we leave Cassio alone with Iago, and this is where um, Iago starts weaving his uh, very, very vicious web. I mean, this guy is as bad as Richard III, he really is. Um, he may not be killing people, but the way he's messing with their heads is, uh, is quite amazing. So, welcome Iago, we must to the watch. Not this hour, Lieutenant, tis not yet ten of the clock. Our general cast us thus early for the love of his Desdemona, who let us not therefore blame. He has not yet made want in the night with her, and she is sport for Jove. So, it's not yet time for them to go to the watch. And Cassio says, she's a most exquisite lady, and I'll warrant her full of game. Indeed, she's a most fresh and delicate creature. So this is between Iago and Cassio. What an eye she has. Methinks it sounds a parlay to provocation. Um, in other words, it, uh, it's her, her eye um, is almost a, um, it, it's almost a summons for prov provocation. It's, it's very provoking for men. Um, an inviting eye and yet methinks right modest. And when she speaks, is it not an alarm to love? When she speaks, is it not a call to love? So everything about this woman incites love in men, or, or lust, I suppose. He's, uh, it's a bit like uh, in tennis, how they try to drive the other player into a corner before hitting straight down the line. 
he's trying to drive a point here and he's trying to drive Cassio into that point. She is indeed perfection, well happiness to their sheets. Come Lieutenant, I have a stoop of wine in here without are a brace of cypress gallets that would fain have a measure to the health of Black Othello. So he's got some wine, there's some mates, let's go drinking. Cassio says, not tonight, good Iago. I have very poor and unhappy brains for drinking. I could well wish courtesy would invent some other custom of entertainment. Oh, they are friends, but one cup I'll drink for you. I had drunk but one cup tonight, and that was craftily qualified to well diluted. And behold what innovation disorder it makes here. I am unfortunate in the infirmity and dare not task my weakness with any more. So he's realised he has a weakness, he has a light head for wine and doesn't want to push his luck. So Iago keeps working on him. What men, tis a night of revels, the gallants desire it. What are they? Here at the door, I pray you call them in. I'll do it, but it dislikes me. He doesn't like doing it. And Iago says, if, if I can fasten but one cup upon him, with that which he had drunk tonight already, he'll be as full of quarrel and offence as my young mistress's dog. Now my sick fool Roderigo, whom love hath turned almost the wrong side out, to Desdemona hath tonight caroused. Potations pottle deep, and he's to watch, he's to be on the watch. Three else of Cyprus, noble swelling spirits that hold their honours in a wary distance. Um, they're, they're touchy about their honour, so therefore they're going to be very easy fodder for Iago. Uh, for them to be provoked. The very elements of this warlike isle have I tonight flustered with flowing cups and they watch too. Now amongst this flock of drunkards am I to put our Cassio in some actions that may offend the isle. So, um, you know, you've got these guys that are very touchy about their honour. You've got Cassio who's got a weak head for drink. You've got Roderigo who's so in love with Desdemona he'll do anything to get her. Uh, we've got a very, very dangerous cocktail brewing here, and they're all on the watch. So they're not supposed to be drinking, but they have all been drinking. But here they come, if consequence do but approve my dream, my boat sails freely, twixt wind and stream. And dream and stream. And that often, that often happens at the end of a big speech, is that you'll have a little bit of um, rhyme. <coughs> Poor God, they have given me a rouse already. Good faith, a little one, not past a pint, as I am a soldier. Some wine, ho! And then, uh, and let the cannikin clink, clink, and let me the cannikin clink. A soldier's a man, O man's life but a span. Why then, let a soldier drink. Some wine, boys. For God, an excellent soul. So this was, uh, so Iago is singing. I learned it in England, where indeed they are most potent in potting. Um, they are, they're, they're very good at drinking. Your Dane, your German, and your swag-bellied Hollander drink ho are nothing to your English. And given that he was catering to an English audience, they would have loved this. I mean, half of them in the, in the, uh, in the globe, in the, in the groundlings proper, were drunk anyway. Is your Englishman so exquisite in his drinking? Why, he drinks you with facility, your Dane, dead drunk. He sweats not to overthrow your Almain, uh, German. He gives your Hollander a vomit ere the next pottle can be filled. Pottle meaning tankard. To the health of our general, I am for it, Lieutenant, I'll do you justice. And then um, Iago sings, O sweet England. King Stephen was and a worthy peer, his breeches cost him but a crown. He held them sixpence all too dear, with that he called the tailor Lown. He was a white of high renown, and thou art but of low degree. Tis pride that pulls the country down. Then take the old cloak about thee. Excuse me. Some wine, ho. Cassio says, For God, this is a more exquisite song than the other. Will you hear it again? No, for I hold him to be unworthy of his place that does those things. Well, God's above all, and there be souls must be saved, and there must be souls that must not be saved. Um, this is... Uh, referring to Calvinism, which believed that you were predestined to either to be saved or not saved, that everything was out of your hands, that you were predestined to either go to heaven or go to hell. <laughs> I 
It's too good, Lieutenant. For my own part, no offence to the General nor any men of quality, I hope to be saved. He hopes to be saved. And so do I, Lieutenant. Aye, but by your leave, not before me. So he doesn't want him to die before him, in other words. The Lieutenant is to be saved before the ensign. Let's have no more of this. Let's do our affairs. God forgive us our sins. Gentlemen, let's look to our business. Do not think, gentlemen, I am drunk. This is my ensign, this is my right hand, this is my left. I am not drunk now. I can stand well enough when I speak well enough. In other words, he is drunk, because often what happens when you are drunk is you try to prove that you are not drunk. Excellent, well. Why, very well, then you must not think that I am drunk. And then he exits. To the platform, masters, come, let's set the watch. And then Iago is talking to Montano. You see this fellow that is gone before. He's a soldier fit to stand by Caesar. And give direction and do but see his vice. To, Tis to his virtue a just equinox. The one's as long as the other. So his virtue and his vice are of equal size. Tis pity of him. Excuse me. I fear the trust the fellow puts him in. On some odd time of his infirmity will shake this island. But is he often thus? Tis evermore his prologue to his sleep. He'll watch the horologue a double set if drink not rock his cradle. In other words, he'll stay up twice around the clock if he's not drunk. And uh, he's painting a very bad picture of Cassio here because Cassio very rarely drinks. It happens to be drinking tonight. It were well the general were put in mind of it. Perhaps he sees it not, or his good nature prizes the virtue that appears in Cassio and looks not on his evils. Is this not true? And then enter Roderigo. How now, Roderigo? I pray you, after the lieutenant go, and then Roderigo exits. And tis great pity that the noble Moor should hazard such a place as his own second, with one of engraft infirmity. It were an, on it was an, were an honest action to say so to the Moor. So Iago is really painting a bad picture of Cassio here. Montano saying, well, maybe it is a pity that he is second in command because he's obviously got this infirmity, you know, this um, head for drink. Not I, for this fair island, I do love Cassio well and would do much to cure him of this evil. Help, help, but hark, what noise? Zwoons, you rogue, you rascal. What's the matter, lieutenant? A knave, teach me my duty. I'll beat the knave into a twig and bottle. Beat me? Dost thou prate, rogue? Nay, good lieutenant, I pray you, sir, hold your hand. Let me go, sir, or I'll knock you or the mazard. Head. Come, come, you're drunk. Drunk? And they fired. Iago says to Rodrigo, away, I say, go, cry out a mutiny. Go, go out and cry a mutiny. Nay, good lieutenant, God's will, gentlemen, help, ho, lieutenant, sir. Montano, sir, help, masters, here's a goodly watch indeed. Who's that which rings the bell? Diablo. Ho! The town will rise. God's will, Lieutenant. Hold. You'll be ashamed forever. A fellow and his attendants come with weapons. What's the matter here? His wounds. I bleed still. I am hurt to death. And then he attacks Cassia and says he dies. Hold for your lives. Hold ho, Lieutenant, sir. Montano, gentlemen, have you forgot all place of sense and duty? Hold. The general speaks to you. Hold, hold. For shame. Why, how now, ho, from whence arises this? Are we turned Turks, and to ourselves do that which heaven hath forbid the Ottomites? By raising the storm, yeah. So why do they do themselves what the Turks could not do? Which heaven forbade the Turks to do. For Christian shame put by this barbarous brawl. He that stirs next to carve for his own rage holds this soul light. He dies upon his motion, silence that dreadful bell, it frights the isle from her propriety. And the bell stops. What is the matter, masters? Honest Iago, that looks dead with grieving, speak. Who began this? On thy love, I charge thee. Iago says, I do not know. Friends all but now, even now, in quarter and in terms like bride and groom. Divesting them for bed, and then but now, as if some planet has 
had unwitted men swords out and tilting at another's breasts in opposition bloody. I cannot speak any beginning to these peevish, peevish odds, and would in action glorious I had lost those legs that brought me to a part of it. So he's saying that he does not know how um, they came to be fighting. How comes it, Michael, you are thus forgot? I pray you pardon me, I cannot speak. Worthy Montana, you will want to be civil. The gravity and stillness of your youth the world hath noted, and your name is great in mouths of widest, wisest censure. What's the matter that you unlace your reputation thus, and spend your rich opinion for the name of a night brawler? Give me answer to it. So, Montano's never been like that before, and uh, Othello's asking why he's suddenly um, ruining his reputation now. Worthy Othello, I am hurt to danger, your officer Iago can inform you while I spare speech, which something now offends me. Of all that I do know, no, nor know I ought, by me that said or done amiss to night, unless self-charity be sometimes a vice, and defend itself be a sin, when violence assails us. So it's not my fault. He was attacked. Um, you know, that self-defence shouldn't be a sin. Now by heaven my blood begins my safer guides to rule, and passion, having my best judgment colleague, assize to lead the way. Zwoons, if I stir or do but lift this arm, the best of you shall sink in my rebuke. Give me to know how this foul rout began, and who set it on, and he that is approved in this offence. Though he had twinned with me both at birth, shall lose me. So whoever's guilty will lose him, will um, lose his friendship. What in the town of war, yet wild, the people's heart brimful of fear, to manage private and domestic quarrel in night, and on court and guard of safety, tis monstrous, Iago. Who began it? Montano says to Iago, if partially offend or biased, or leagued in office, thou dost deliver more or less than truth, thou art no soldier. So, unless you speak the truth, you're, you're not a true soldier. So Iago, with quite a long speech, says, Touch me not so near, I'd rather have this tongue cut from my mouth than it should do offence to Michael Cassio, yet I persuade myself to speak the truth, shall nothing wrong him. This it is, General. Montano and myself being in speech, there comes a fellow crying out for help, and Cassio following him with determined sword to execute upon him. So this gentleman steps into Cassio and entreats his pause. Myself the crying fellow did pursue, lest by his clamour, as it so fell out, the town might fall in fright. He, swift of foot, outran my purpose, this is Rodrigo, and I returned the rather for that I heard the clink and fall of swords and Cassio high an oath, which till tonight I ne'er might say before. When I came back, for this was brief, I found them close together at blow and thrust, even as again they were when you yourself did part them. More of this matter cannot, cannot I report, both men are men, but men are men. The sometimes forget, the best sometimes forget, though Cassio did some little wrong to him, as men in rage strike those that wish them best. Yet surely Cassio, I believe, received from him that fled some strange indignity which patience could not pass. So Montano wasn't at fault. I know Iago, thy honesty and love doth mince this matter, making it light to Cassio. Cassio, I love thee, but never more be an officer of mine, you sat. Uh, Desdemona rises. Um, Look, if my gentle love be not raised up, I'll make thee an example. What is the matter, dear? All's well now, sweeting. Come away to bed. Montano, he says to Montano, Sir, if your hurts, myself will be your surgeon. Lead him off. Iago, look with care about the town, and silence those whom this vile brawl distracted. Come, Desdemona, tis the soldier's life to have their balmy slumbers weight with strife.
And then Iago uh, talks at some length with Cassio. And this is where he lays the seed that uh, he needs to entreat Desdemona to act on his behalf with Othello to get his job back. What are you hurt, Lieutenant? Or pass or I past all surgery. Marry, God forbid. Reputation, reputation, reputation. Oh, I had lost my reputation. I had lost the immortal part of myself, and what remains is bestial. My reputation, Iago. My reputation. As I am an honest man, I thought you would receive some bodily wound. There is more sense in that than in reputation. Reputation is an idle and most false imposition, oft got without merit and lost without deserving. You have lost no reputation at all unless you repute yourself such a loser. What man, there are more ways to recover the general again. You are but now cast in this mood. Punishment more in policy than in malice. Even so as one would be his offenceless dog to a frightened and imperious lion, sue to him again, he's yours, um, and treat him again. He'll, he'll, get you, he'll give you the, the position back. I would rather sue to be despised than to deceive so good a commander with so slight, so drunken, and so indiscreet an officer. Drunk, and speak parrot, and squabble. Swagger, swear, and discourse, fustian with one's own shadow. O thou in invisible spirit of wine, if thou hast no name to be known by, let us call thee devil. What was he then that followed you with your sword? What had he done to you? I know not. Is it possible? I remember a massive thing, but nothing distinctly. A quarrel, but nothing wherefore. O God, that men should put an enemy in their mouths to steal away their brains, that we should with joy, pleasance, revel and applause transform ourselves into beasts. Why you are but now you but you are now well enough. How came thus recovered? It hath pleased the devil drunkenness to give place to the devil wrath. So so he he feels so much wrath on himself that uh, he's been sobered up. One imperfectness shows me another to make me frankly despise myself. Come, you are too severe a moraler. As the time, the place and the condition of this country stands. I could heartily wish this had not fallen, but since it is as it is, mend it for your own good. Cassio says, I will ask him for my place again. He shall tell me I am a drunkard. Had I as many mouths as Hydra? Now Hydra was a mythical serpent with many heads who grew two more when one was cut off. Had I as many mouths as Hydra, such an answer would stop them all. To be now a sensible man, by and by a fool, and presently a beast. Oh, strange! Every inordinate cup is unblessed, and the ingredient is a devil. Remember he said before that, uh, that uh, the, the Diablo... That was a couple of pages ago, actually. Hmm. Come, come, good wine is a good familiar creature if it be well used. Exclaim no more against it, so in moderation wine's fine. And good lieutenant, I think you think I love you. I have well approved it, sir. I, drunk? You or any man living may be drunk at a time, man. I'll tell you what you shall do. Our general's wife is now the general. Um, in other words, uh, Desdemona. Um, is the, the general now of Othello, as women generally become when they become wives. So, in other words, he's going to say, please sue to Desdemona. I may say so in this respect, for that he hath devoted and given up himself to the contemplation, mark, and denotement of her parts and graces. Confess yourself freely to her. Importune her help to put you in your place again. She is a so free, so kind, so apt, so blessed a disposition, she holds it a vice in her goodness not to do more than she is requested. This broken joint between you and her husband entreat her to splinter, and my fortunes against any lay with naming. This crack of your love shall grow stronger than it was before. So if you sue to Desdemona, um, the, uh, the, the crack in your relationship between you and Othello will 
become twice as strong as it was before. You advise me well. I protest in the sincerity of love and honest kindness. I think it freely, and betimes in the morning, I will beseech the virtuous Desdemona to undertake for me. I am desperate of my fortunes if they check me here. You are in the right. Good night, Lieutenant. I must to the watch. Good night, honest Diago. And Iago has quite a long speech. And what's he then that says I play the villain? This actually, um, play the villain, um, is mirrored in Richard III. Um, if I play not the lover, I then play the villain. In his uh, opening speech. Let me just find Richard III. Because uh, I, I do recall that if I, I play not the lover, I therefore play the villain. Just something I remember. Because he does refer to other plays. But Iago is just... Um, Yes, and since, and therefore since I cannot prove a lover to entertain these farewell spoken days, I am determined to prove a villain. I was right. Sorry, that just, that just came back to me. And what's he then that says, I play the villain? It's just the same turn of phrase that got me, play the villain. When this advice, when this advice is free, I give an honest. And what's he then that says I play the Venice when this advice is free I give an honest? So he thinks, you know, how can he be a villain if he's giving all this honest free advice? Hmm. And what I'll do is I'll leave it at the end of this speech because this is quite a long video. Oh no, we've only got another page or so. Probable to thinking, and indeed the course, to win the war again, for tis most easy the inclining Desdemona to subdue in any honest suit. So Desdemona will, you know, she'll be, she'll be okay with it. She's framed as fruitful as the free elements, and then for her to win the war, were it to renounce his baptism. All seals and symbols of redeemed sin, his soul is so infetted to her love that she may make and may do what she list, even as her appetite shall play the god with his weak function. How am I then a villain to counsel Cassio to this parallel course directly to his good? He's justifying himself. Divinity of hell, when devils will the blackest sins put on. They do suggest at first, with heavenly shows, as I do now. For whilst this honest fool plies Desdemona to repair his fortune, and she for him pleads strongly to the moor, I'll pour this pestilence into his ear that she repeals him for her body's lust, and by how much she strives to do him good, she shall undo her credit with the moor. So will I turn her virtue into pitch. Um, pitch is a, you know, the stuff they use on the roads, bitumen. And out of her goodness make the net that shall enmesh them all. So what he's going to do is, he's saying, well, how can you say I'm the villain? Because the best way for Cassio to... Um, win favour with the moor is to go through Desdemona, but he will use his suit to Desdemona to poison the moor by thinking that she and Cassio are having an affair. Make the net that shall enmesh them all. <laughs> How now, Roderigo? And uh, Roderigo speaks in prose. I do follow here in the chase, not like a hound that hunts, but one that fills up the cry. My money is almost spent. I had been tonight exceedingly well cudgelled. I think the issue will be I have had I, ha I shall have so much experience for my pains, and so with no money at all and with little more wit, return again to Venice. So he's going back to Venice because he's broke. And Iago entreats him. He says, "How poor are they that have not patience? What wound did ever heal but by degrees? Thou knowest we work by wit and not by witchcraft." And wit depends on dilatory time, drawn out time. Dost not go well. Cassio hath beaten thee, and thou by that small hurt hath, hast cashiered Cassio. Though other things grow fair against the sun, yet fruits that blossom first will first be ripe. 
So although others may be appear to be prospering, your plan will be successful because it started first. Fruits that blossom first will first be ripe. Content thyself a while. By the mass, tis morning. Pleasure and action make the hours seem short. Retire thee. Go well thou art billeted away, I say. Thou shalt, thou shalt no more hereafter. Nay, get thee gone. And exits Rodrigo. Two things are to, are to be done. My wife must move for Cassio to her mistress. I'll set her on. Myself a while to draw the more apart and bring him jump where he may Cassio find soliciting his wife. Aye, that's the way. Dull, not device, by coldness and delay. So don't let sluggishness and slowness to act weaken the plot. <laughs> Dull, not device, by coldness and delay. He's really as wicked as Richard III, except he doesn't kill anybody. Uh, well, Desdemona by uh, proxy. Okay, so that's Act 2. Uh, join me for Act 3 when uh, Stage 2 of Iago's plan is hatched.